So, hello. My name is uh, Pablo Golub. I'm working for Cybertech and I'm a senior database consultant or senior database developer. And <clears throat> today I want uh, to speak about PostgreSQL and Windows, uh, how we can use it, how we can uh, develop it, and some specific issues for administration and running. We'll see. So um, a couple of <clears throat> A couple of uh, a couple of uh, words about my company, Cybertech. So we are a twenty years old company. We do everything for Postgres development, support, any kind of uh, any kind of service you can imagine for Postgres. We do it. We have several branches and our. Uh, headquarter is in uh, Austria. <clears throat> um, here you can see some of our uh, clients. So please choose your choose your fighter. Yeah, as I said, so we do support, training, consulting, tuning, clustering patroning whatever whatever you want just ask us and we can provide that service for you so let's let's return to, to our <clears throat> topic so uh, usually <clears throat> uh, when uh, in PostgreSQL community we are talking about windows uh, i'm hearing a lot about boo windows sucks windows must die what the hell who who is using Windows uh, these days. Uh, but <clears throat> according to Stack Overflow developer survey uh, this year, um, we can see that uh, mostly half of all developers <clears throat> are using Windows as a target platform. So uh, half of services or products uh, are, uh, are targeted against Windows. But if we will ask our developers about their primary operating system, we can see that 45% of, uh, of, of all developers uh, use uh, Windows as a primary operating system. Okay, what about Postgres under Windows? Why anyone wants to run Production maybe server under Windows. Is it faster? Is it safer? Better? What? What is? What is the reason? Uh, for that, uh, I, I'm asking Magnus Hegender, uh, the legendary uh, developer. Uh, thanks to him, we have uh, a native Windows port uh, for uh, Windows. So nine nine years ago, he said that uh, Postgres will definitely run faster on Linux uh, because uh, PostgreSQL was designed for Unix architecture. And later during the port, during the work on uh, Windows <clears throat> build, uh, developers uh, just implement the same ideas of Unix architecture on Windows and it, it it works fine but probably it doesn't perform the best if if, if it might be created from scratch for windows uh, <clears throat> i asked Ilekas malimiaski another a friend of mine a professional in ios tech of uh, of linux and he and he said that uh, <clears throat> Uh, when PostgreSQL was ported, probably the old Windows iOS tech was taken into account. So nobody knows um, for uh, the modern iOS tech and, and then PostgreSQL, is it better or, or, or not? And uh, one more quote from Magnus. 12 years ago, he said that Probably there is no need in 64-bit uh, uh, 
built for Windows? Probably not. But as we all know, today there is no official 32-bit build of PostgreSQL for Windows. So I will show you how, uh, how, how that uh, changed during the time. So, okay, let's, uh, let's talk about history, how uh, these changes were applied during the time. Uh, for that, I use uh, official sources, uh, just like PostgreSQL documentation and release notes. And uh, I, I, I want to I want to share with you one more source uh, from Lucardo.org, where all the release notes for all versions of PostgreSQL, beginning from six something, uh, are listed on the same HTML page, <clears throat> so you can. Uh, find, search for anything and compare between uh, between the releases, what was added, what was missing, etc., etc. So the first, uh, <clears throat> the first, uh, the first time the Windows is mentioned <clears throat> in the release notes is uh, 1997, and uh, thanks to Bruce Monjan, he just decided to remove everything. Windows specific. So, okay, good start. Then later, Magnus Hegander <coughs> implemented that uh, libpq, libpq is a client library, uh, can now be compiled on Windows. It can be compiled, but it is not yet officially supported in uh, 6.4. Um, 6.5. Uh, some work on uh, Windows NT backend port started uh, 7.0. This is the first official support for client library libpq. So uh, now on, people can use this library to create client applications, but the server is still runs on uh, Unix. So this is 20 years ago. Uh, 7.2, uh, here we see that um, uh, first port using Tigwin arrived. Uh, so Tigwin is the layer, is the POSIX, POSIX layer for Windows. So, so it, it implements POSIX calls for Windows. So the, so the um, uh, software things, uh, that it runs on the we on the POSIX, and then this layer translates the POSIX calls into the native Windows API. This is not the true port yet, but this is the first uh, step. Uh, 7.3, uh, I, I think this is the best release ever because in 7.3 we have uh, schemas introduced. And as you see, uh, some <clears throat> additional uh, functions added to the PQ by Bruce Mungen. Um, uh, some uh, WALS uh, functionality, uh, etc. Uh, 7.4 Bruce uh, implemented PQ FreeMem for uh, working with the uh, memory. Uh, from the libpq client library. This, this is still about client library, not the uh, server itself. Added some uh, compatibility functions uh, and the uh, uh, client interfaces now can be built using Minji, Minji W toolchain. I will talk about it later. The first native uh, support for Windows was in uh, 2005. <coughs> Uh, that was uh, 8.0 release. Uh, so thanks to Magnus Hengander and thanks to everyone involved. So from now we can run uh, PostgreSQL server, not only client applications, we can run uh, Windows uh, PostgreSQL uh, server on Windows. Uh, later, year later, some Unicode working, uh, Kerberos port, 
IPv6 connections by Andrew Dunstan in uh, 8.2, some authentication, authentication edit, um, uh, ability fixes, some internal semaphore implementations, uh, 8.3, the first release uh, where officially Microsoft used C++ used for building uh, packages. Um, 8.4, 8, 8 uh, some internal time T that I, is uh, made, made, made unification for all platforms. So, so um, on every platform, time is now 64 bit. Uh, 9.0, so some event logs in uh, I said UT, UTF 16 coding, not UTF 8 as you might expect. And, uh, <clears throat> and that was the first release where uh, support for 64 bit Windows implement. So it was only 10 years ago, not so long. Okay, 9.1. Uh, here we can see that uh, PG City RPG control now allows us to use a Windows Server as an auto start or start on demand command in, in the auto start or start on demand mode. And in, in that year, <clears throat> by Andrew Dunstan, uh, another extremely important functionality introduced. Uh, from now on, we can build uh, PostgreSQL. Uh, with the mean GW64 toolchain, I will tell later about the differences between mean GW and mean GW64 and what that means. But uh, mean GW64 mean GW allows us cross compile the whole source tree. So you can run, uh, run this compiler, this toolchain on Linux and compile binaries for Windows 64. Just like as an example. Um, nothing interesting here, probably 9.4. Some bug fixes. Um, 9.5, higher precision time step resolution. As you know, uh, PostgreSQL can store up to six uh, digits uh, <clears throat> after the um, uh, after the dot in, in uh, so this text just means microseconds. And to obtain that uh, precision uh, under Windows, you one should use a special API for that. That was implemented by Craig Kringer. Uh, 10 version, nothing. Okay, uh, PG function in for V1, that is uh, the macros used for client uh, library libpq and uh, from this release every function every client function in library marked with this macros uh, is marked as dll expert so you can i mean every developer using client library can use all this function automatically um then, uh, so we can see that here is a large pages support in Unix, in Unix world. Uh, this is known as huge pages, man, huge pages. So in the Windows world, we called uh, large pages two years ago. A uh, year ago, change log for 12th version. Um, from now on, we require C99 compliant compiler. So that must be Microsoft Visual C 2013 and higher. Uh, that was implemented by, by Anders Freund. And uh, this year will provide us will provide us with the new functionality by Peter Eisentraut. This is Unix diamond sockets, uh, collation versions, and uh, by Thomas Monroe and uh, by Michael Pakir. Um, the support for Windows 2000 were dropped. Yes, 20 years past. 
So okay, what what was the path for, for for Windows? So first mention of Windows is in the 6.1, the official client support for client application in 7.0 full official support for both client and server is 8.0 and support for uh, 64 bits in 9.0 version windows packages uh, as you probably know windows is famous for its installation packages uh, the, the, there is a, a, there is a package manager called chocolatey but it's not yet official so the the only one official installer listed on the official site postgresql.org is um, installation package uh, package by enterprise db uh, two years ago there were the, there was another one by big sql uh, i like it. It, it it was quite interesting it looked like uh, uh, package manager so you just uh, download the client and then choose what exactly version you want to install uh, as i said chocolate package manager provides uh, vanilla packages of postgresql by but they are not official and um, if you want some non vanilla postgresql servers you have from what to choose for example, Enterprise DB Advanced Server, uh, Postgres Pro, Powergress from our Japanese colleagues, and uh, our company has uh, Cybertech TED package if you want it. Transparent encryption. Okay, how, uh, how different uh, <clears throat> packages uh, on Windows from the Linux? Let's compare with the Ubuntu packages. Packages uh, usually uh, in Linux world we have different packages. We have a, we have separate package for client tools and libraries. We have a different package for uh, server uh, files and binaries. I mean core database server. We have additional models and extensions in country uh, package. And if you want to develop or work in <clears throat> um, uh, for, for if you want to develop something, uh, there, there is an additional development package. In, um, in Windows world, at least for an uh, official enterprise DB installer, that's not true. There is only one installation package. package. Uh, it consists everything. As you can see, it consists uh, core uh, binaries. It consists um, extensions and config models, command line tools, and plus it consists PG admin for the graphical user interface um, application to work uh, with the PostgreSQL server. Okay, we have uh, another option. We can uh, download, we can officially download binaries um, from the enterprise db site as well as a uh, installer and uh, sometimes it's better to do so uh, the only reason the only reason um, <clears throat> between the installation and and, and and the binaries package is that you need to, uh, to 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 make some steps on your own if you don't know binaries you need um, manually initialize a new data directory cluster uh, you need to control how to start how to stop how to, to pause cluster using the special command line tool pgctl pg control <clears throat> and if you want to use a windows service to control postgresql instance then you can use pgctl register command which allows you to which allows you to uh, register the service uh, to start to stop etc uh, if you want to build your own installation or you want to deploy um, postgresql server or some of the tools with your application you may also 
such as the log binaries, as shown here. Uh, then just extract them, remove what you don't need. For example, if you want to deploy a uh, server with, with your administration tool, then you probably don't need uh, PG admin 4 or you don't need symbols which are used for, for uh, development. And then <clears throat> somehow uh, deploy it with your application. Okay, so installation, that was installation of Windows running on Windows. So first of all, as I said, on Windows, we are using a concept of a service. So a Windows service is just a regular program, but it's different in the way that uh, it, it, it implements a special uh, services API. So it communicates with the Windows and it started by the special process launcher process. And it regulated, it listens for start, for stop, for pause, uh, commands, and reacts in the, in the proper way. And the reason for that is that services under Windows uh, do not require any user interaction. So even if uh, nobody logged in on Windows, the PostgreSQL can be started and operating normally. Uh, but yet, if you want to somehow control services, you can do it with uh, uh, Windows with Windows uh, administration tools. No problem with that. Uh, how to start service? You can start, it, you can create services manually, as I said, for binaries, or services, uh, service is created uh, by the installer. Uh, so for that, uh, pgctl register command called as parameter specifies should PostgreSQL start uh, with the system or wait for our command to start. Uh, we can, we can, uh, we can, um, we can specify a service name for for that uh, service that allows us to have several services and several instances on the same machine. For example, if this is a test uh, environment, of course you can uh, unregister a service from the system with the command. And one more interesting command of PGCTL is a kill command which sends a signal to a, specific, to a specified process. Why do we need that? Because Windows uh, has three kinds of signals and none of them works. Windows doesn't work with the concept of signals. Well, to be honest, uh, there are three signals they are used for, uh, for console applications, but um, the in Linux, there, there is no uh, built-in kill command. You can now just uh, signal to any process uh, uh, some uh, <coughs> some uh, signal. So for that, <coughs> uh, PGCTL implements an uh, internal machinery. So using PGCTL kill command, you can emulate, you can emulate the behavior on POSIX systems when you just kill something to your Postgres instance. Uh, where it's convenient, uh, for example, Patroni is using uh, signals for controlling uh, Postgres SQL instance. Uh, some, some applications written for, uh, for POSIX or UNIX are also uh, usually used the concept of signals. Uh, another difference, another difference on Windows is the bus delimiter. As you probably know, on Windows, uh, the standard bus delimiter is a backslash. And you should always remember about this. Just as you can see, for example, if we set log directory to the proper Windows string. C backslash temp backslash boom, 
and then we try to start our instance we will have very weird error message what happens i will tell you what happens uh, postgres ql conf file allows you uh, allows you <coughs> escaping so backslash t will be changed will be treated as tab and backslash b will be treated as uh, backspace so if you want to use backslash path delimiter on windows you should double it to escape backslash but you can also use the regular slash as a path delimiter that's okay postgresql understand <clears throat> understands that uh, and the same the same applies to the patroni configuration files you need either double or escape backslashes backslashes or use regular slashes there okay so it's uh, starting from 9.6 there is uh, a thought that shared buffers uh, are not as effective on windows uh, as on linux uh, we cannot find that uh, statement now in the official manual but some of the sources are are still are still tell us that uh, that this is true the thing is that um, uh, there are probably no environment where the large shared buffers tested. We still lack uh, information about uh, different environments under Windows. So if you have some, please share your knowledge with us. As I said before, huge pages uh, are known as large pages on Windows. And it's a bit tricky, uh, tricky to, to run PostgreSQL using uh, log pages uh, because you cannot run it as a regular service. You need to apply some group policy and you need to run uh, to start uh, Postgres using the command line uh, on the administrator account. That means that you probably need to somehow control <clears throat> the process. And that's a little bit tricky. Uh, we have no, we have no, no, we have no data about uh, how performant uh, Windows installation with the uh, large pages can be. There is a theory that it might help, especially with the combination of uh, high values for shared buffers. But again, we need to to collect some knowledge about this using the real, real, real data. Uh, shared memory type, of course, it should be Windows. The only one another you might want to try is CSV, but there is no need in that. Just maybe in case of some experiment or development or whatever. So the same applies for a dynamic shared memory type. Uh, both of these should be Windows. Uh, effective cache size, <clears throat> the rules are the same as for uh, Linux. Uh, this value used only for estimation purposes. Uh, so don't be afraid if you set this value to something that can uh, kill your uh, system. So the conservative value is uh, half of the memory available. If you want a more aggressive, set it to 75% of the memory available. You can try to estimate the proper value uh, with the task manager open uh, memory tab of the uh, memory, memory tab of the performance. And uh, there you can uh, sum cached value with the available and put it and try if that helps. A uh, year ago, I uh, told that Unix socket directories are not available under Windows. Uh, so this is the this is not true for uh, for uh, PostgreSQL 13. 
thanks to Peter Eisentraut uh, in uh, this year release, we will have uh, Unix domain socket support on the Windows. And that means that I need to change back uh, some 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 changes for Patroni I did last year disabling Unix uh, Unix domain socket support. So some different uh, authentication methods. So for GSS API, uh, you will need uh, MIT Kerberos for Windows, and uh, SSPI will work only if server and client uh, run Windows. So that's uh, one more notice. If you're running was uh, your under Windows, you might want to disable Windows Defender, also known as anti malware service executable. Probably this is not the case for uh, this Windows Server environment, but if you are running a uh, test environment on your local machine during development, you should do it because PostgreSQL creates a lot of uh, tiny files and systems don't crazy about it. Two, uh, you can do it in Windows security settings. Just exclude folder with uh, data folder with uh, with the cluster and exclude a folder with the Cosmos binaries, and you may add the Postgres process to, to, to the exclusion. Okay, development on Windows. Uh, according to manual, uh, it is recommended to use Visual, 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 Visual Studio Express to 12, 12, 19. Why Express? Because it's free. But you can uh, build uh, Postgres starting from 13 to 19. All the winners will be dependent on redistributable packages uh, for 32 bits or for 60, 64. The official installation binaries, binaries are built using Visual Studio. And there is another way of building the source tree, as I said before. Uh, the old one is MinGW and MSYS. So MinGW is minimalist move for Windows. Treat is at a tool chain with compiler and, and needed uh, headers and libraries. So MinGW doesn't have a Unix simulation layer, so it, try, it tries to it tries to implement uh, POSIX calls using the Windows API. Uh, and MCs is just a collection of uh, GNU utilities such as Bash, Make, Grab, etc. This is just a convenient environment for uh, to to use it with this uh, MinGW tool chain. Um, so uh, MCs, uh, MCs and MinGW are uh, quite. Old and they allow and they allow only build uh, 32 bit program, no support for 64. For that, there is new uh, version of uh, both of these um, software packages MSYS2 and MinGW W64 means for Windows 64. So MSYS2 is an independent rewrite of. MCs. It's it's not a next generation. It's independent. It, it's a it's a fork based on the modern Sigmin, as I said, the POSIX compatibility layer. And Min, Min GW is a tool chain for which was uh, improved for support of 64 uh, bits. And the, the main thing here that Min GW. Windows 64 allows us cross components, so you can run it under uh, Linux and compile binaries for Windows. And MCS2 provide, provides you with the package manager Pacman, which is very convenient comparing to the previous version. So how cross compiling looks like, suppose we are running on Ubuntu or we are running on uh, Windows subsystem Linux 2 or 
run even on Windows. We install the MinGW W64 tool chain. Uh, then depending on what our target is, 32 bit or 64, we <clears throat> we run configure script with the proper target, and then we do may uh, and then we call make. And one more tool chain is a Sequin. Uh, Sequin tries to bring a POSIX compatible environment to Windows. <clears throat> So there is a, there is a special uh, dynamic library called segment one, um, um, which is in fact the compatibility layer. So the uh, PostgreSQL or other software uh, think uh, that, uh, that, it, that it, it runs in POSIX environment and do the POSIX calls. And then this layer of Seguin is intercept these POSIX calls and translate it into the Windows API calls. Uh, this approach should all, uh, only be used for old versions of Windows, such as Windows 98 or something. And it's uh, not a, a, a correct way to, to go nowadays. So let me show uh, quickly uh, MCS2 workflow, which is true also for for uh, for uh, for uh, Ubuntu or for a uh, Windows subsystem, Linux subsystem. So let's pretend we, we if the first line here is the command, command line of Windows. So we try, we start MCS2 shell, and our target is 64-bit. Uh, but we can start the same in the bash interpreter uh, uh, in um, Windows subsystem for Linux in Windows 10. And uh, let's create some source directory. Let's clone OpenSSL. You don't need to build uh, OpenSSL. It is, uh, it, is, um, it is available in MCS2. Here, I just want to show you that you can change whatever you want, patch whatever you want, and build it for your purpose. So in this example, I'm, I will be I will build uh, the exact 111 open SSL version, and we'll build it again against with the uh, release 11 of uh, PostgreSQL. Maybe some some client wants exactly that combination. Okay, so. Uh, Let's check. First, we build, we reconfigure and uh, make the open cell. So we provide some uh, targets to, to configure script. Then we run make and install. Then we go to the Postgres. We provide Postgres with the open SSL uh, directories. If you don't want to use custom open cell build, just ignore that, just build it without, with inclusion with libraries. Uh, then we must check um, in the configure output, these six lines where you can see that if some crypto new X data, et cetera, crypto functions found, they should be found because uh, there is no much sense in compiling PostgreSQL without uh, OpenSSL support now, nowadays. And then we, we make, in, in this example, I just want to build some uh, common, common things. So I change the code to source common and build common libraries. And then I build interfaces, scripts, and PG dump, and PG based backup, and PCL. For example, I need uh, only uh, some subset of, of uh, tools, just like example. Of course, you can make all of them and, and, and use it. Just like example that you are able to build whatever you want in whatever way you, you prefer. If you want to produce 32-bit uh, applications, you just need to switch your targets, and the whole process is the same. The interesting thing is in using MCs or in using MinGW uh, is building extensions. 
The thing is that most extensions written for Postgres are not aware uh, of um, Microsoft Visual C or Visual Studio. They are written using the make files and they are using pgconfig tool uh, to, 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 to be built. Uh, so if you want if you want to build most of extensions without official Windows support, you should try MCS2 or try cross-compiling using MinGW64. In this example, uh, I am trying to build PG sample to log extension. As far as I know, uh, this functionality is already implemented in the core, but whatever. This is just a, just an example. As you can see, nothing special. So I just run make, make install, and everything works. So under, under, under the hood, the make process using, is using pgconfig tool from the PostgreSQL uh, installation to determine the headers, libraries, dependencies, etc. Uh, high availability for Windows. There is only one solution right now called Patroni. Uh, we have several clients uh, who who use uh, Patroni uh, clusters. Um, so this is uh, the solution. Uh, this is the solution written by Zolando team. Uh, so they, they call it uh, template in the terms, in the meaning that you need to, to write your configuration files to, to, to be able to uh, to be able to deploy this uh, high availability cluster. So under Windows, um, we are using right now ATCD. Uh, and uh, if you want to check, please go to the GitHub. I will I will provide the link later. Uh, if you if you if you want to check the Windows port of Patroni, you can go to CyberTech uh, GitHub account and uh, see their uh, Patroni uh, installation for Windows package. So it includes etcd, Python, Patroni, uh, and the VIP manager, which allows you to <clears throat> to add or change virtual IP depending on the role of your node. Okay, so summary, summary. There are still a lot of news for Windows in our world, and I believe that will be true a long, long time. And PostgreSQL is working fine under Windows. I have, I have no idea. Of, I have no idea about um, critical systems, but. For most usage, this is completely fine. Uh, I, I would like to see the improved ecosystem for PostgreSQL. A lot of new applications, a lot of new tools, cross-platform for Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. And as we all know, Microsoft is moving to open source very fast. So the question is, not whether we like it or not, the question is how can we live with this? Uh, so here you can see all uh, main links uh, I used. Uh, and uh, you can see uh, the uh, GitHub repository for patroning Windows packaging. And uh, uh, the, the last one is the, uh, my uh, post, my blog post about uh, open uh, about building PostgreSQL using MCS2. Thank you very much. Now, please, your questions. <laughs>